Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield back in Las Vegas talking to two friends from Thunder from Down Under, which is on at the Excalibur. It's the number one show for ladies who want to see delicious men. That's why I'm not in it. And uh, Daniel, how are you? Good, how you doing? I'm all right for my age. And Marcus? Yeah, I'm all right for my age as well, mate. (laughs) It must be fantastic to be you both because a feeling I've never had is that of being attractive. It must be wonderful. I think you're a little too hard on yourself. I'm sure that there's ladies out there that like tall, thin, red-headed men. That's all the only way they recognize me is through the accent and through the T-shirt. So maybe you've got an accent. Maybe if we thought of a Thunder from Down Under t-shirt on you, you'd be good to go. It, can, it does help. I've got to be honest. In this town, having an accent helps. And then we look at you, and I saw the reaction to you last time. I came in for the last half of Thunder from Down Under, and it was extraordinary the reaction you got in the show. I mean, whatever you're doing, the ladies seem to like. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I guess they all like different looks. Yeah. yeah. And that's one good thing that yeah. we've got in our show. Everyone's kind of a different look. Like we've got some taller, some shorter, some with tattoos, some without beard, without beard. So we try to cater for every single lady that comes and sees the show. There's one guy for every, uh, one guy for every girl, you know what I mean? So it's, it's how we've done it. We don't like to keep us all cloned. We kind of keep everyone quite different, yeah. Right, and everybody has their own taste. I mean, the thing about you guys is it's a full-time job because you can't look like me. Nobody's going to pay to see this. Let's be real. So then I say to myself, could I be bothered to do what you do? And the answer's no. I mean, this is a vacation for you, isn't it? It's a lifestyle. Yeah, it's definitely a lifestyle. We, we work pretty much every night and then work out during the days and then you have to... Eating, eating and supplements is a big part of it. That's like, it's like 24 hours a day, really, if yeah. you can include food and stuff. But we love it, and we'd probably be doing it regardless. Even if I wasn't in the show, I'd, I'd be, it'd be a similar lifestyle for me anyway, I think. Let's talk about your day. You wake up at what time, and then you have to start eating when and working out. I mean, are you one of these guys that has to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning to eat a chicken breast because... Yeah, I mean, I mean, if I'm up at two o'clock in the morning, I'll definitely try and get forty grams into me. But the, my day starts off with um, a, li- a liter, a gallon of water. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing this. Um, try to do four to six gallons of water a day. Now that in itself is hard. It's so hard to do. It really, really is difficult. The first two weeks nearly killed me. Um, I'm kind of getting used to it now. But you have to eat every two and a half, three hours. You have to work out. And then of course. You know, guys are a little older like myself as a veteran. I have to try and maintain my looks a little more because I'm getting a bit long in the tooth these days. And you're how old? Uh, I am 45. Right. Um, and I'm just blessed to still be here. And they still shoot me for the calendar. Can you believe it? What's interesting, though, about you is you're the personality in the show. We should say you're the MC who holds the whole thing together. And I've done MCing for 20 years. And let me tell you, I couldn't do your job. The reason being, they're ferocious, your audience, and you have to match that and keep them in their place. I couldn't do your job. I think if you had the experience, you could probably do it because you've got a good voice. So I think that um, it just comes along with the experience. I've been in the show now for 17 years, so it's like I can do it with my eyes closed, really. Daniel, is it still amazing the reaction you get when you walk out? I mean, these women are so into you. I have never seen a reaction like it. It's extraordinary. Yeah, the women get pretty crazy. I guess it's their turn to... I don't know, treat the men like meat or just get, just get, just, yeah, they just get wild and, and they're allowed to and we, we feed off their energy. So um, the louder they are, the more fun we have. And then the bravery of walking out in front of that audience and then you come amongst them, not literally, and you go into that crowd and they can then scratch you, touch you, hold you. It's brave. Yeah, you're safe on stage and then once you go into the crowd, um, it's like throwing the, it's like throwing the, um, <laughs> Um, you know the Romans to the lions and but but you get very good at like being able to it's kind of like the matrix martial arts you can kind of <laughs> you can kind of feel a hand going to go somewhere it's not supposed to so you can push it away and you can do it gracefully now and bend a few hands back and so it comes like an art in itself you know behind the scenes it is a family and it is a team and I guess you have to be a little bit selfless because if you get wrapped up in the ego of what you're doing it would be a car crash backstage wouldn't it the boys sort out the egos yeah. pretty much when they get here Everyone, everyone's pretty cool, I think. Yeah. yeah, we try to knock the egos on the head pretty much straight away because that really comes across on stage. And girls aren't stupid, they're so smart. They can pick an egotistical guy on stage. They can tell if you're ticked off, they can tell if you're pissed off because girls will say to me, something wrong with you tonight? You, want, you didn't see me so, oh yeah, I had a bit of a bad night, but they're really, really smart. And we don't tolerate it either because it's, it's, not, a, it's not a nice um, attribute to have, being egotistical. It doesn't get you anywhere. It's, we're not about ego, we're about fun and, and being humble. And then we look at your diet and how you do this. I mean, the payoff is this show, of course, at the end of the day when you stand on that stage and get the huge reaction. But I mean, you are giving your life over to this. It's a ton of work. Is there ever a point where you think, oh, I wish I could just go in the Aria buffet and eat 
2,000 calories of crap. Yeah, I don't know. If you're exercising a lot and that sort of thing, every now and then you can get away with... Some of the boys eat, like, yeah. a whole lot of cakes and stuff. But it just depends. Like, everyone will... If we've got a photo shoot coming up, everyone will be eating really clean. And then as soon as the shoot's over, everyone will pig out. But I don't think everyone's crazy discipline all year round. Like, everyone... No. Nah. But what, 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 what happens is, though, when you're, in the, when you're in the industry of having to show your body, if you're not looking as good as you think or you should be, when you've got to get up there and take your shirt off that really messes with your mind, you know what I mean? Although maybe the girls couldn't see that you've put on an extra, you know, five pounds of water weight, it, you see it in your head and that and that really is, I mean, you're, the, you're your own worst critic, so. The water thing fascinates me. I've read an article recently that you can actually drown if you drink too much water. Yeah. This is not a joke, it no, sounds like it. You can sure. drown within yourself. Yeah. What's the purpose of that then? Um, Why are you drinking so much? Just um, to flush out my system for my skin, um, just because it makes me feel better in my brain, makes me think better. Uh, and you actually start craving water. It's like killed my sugar cravings so I don't drink soda anymore I haven't been drinking um, you know eating as much chocolate as I was really a lot of benefits to it, especially if you put lemon with it and I believe what you do is a talent to be able to dance the way you do you have to be born with that you can be trained to be better but you've got to have rhythm and then your frame I mean could anybody look like you or do you think at this point that actually you're born to be more physically attractive physically built than someone else nah it, it, most of us were probably the opposite to how we look now and that's why we look the way we do now because we were probably skinny little kids at school no i think if you it once you learn how to do it um like you have to know what you're doing and then no anyone you could do anyone can do it you just need to be you need to learn how to do it right and what to eat and 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 you know that's pretty yeah and then it becomes addictive and then it becomes you see how good you start to look and then you start to train more and more and more and the better you get then you learn more things and you know all the guys in our show we've it's like working with 10 personal trainers because they all have their own little yeah. thing that they do and you know some of our guys are in just incredible shape and is it thrilling when you go on facebook and the title is working at thunder down under i mean there's an ultimate revenge to anybody who laughed at you at school isn't well, there yeah that that would that would go through a lot of people's mi <laughs> minds as well so that yeah i think so for yeah. sure if, if anyone had any problems in school or any any anything like that you would definitely capitalize Look at on what now. we do but I was having this conversation <laughs> with my sister the other day I was like I'm getting all these Facebook requests from people that I went to school with and they're all the guys that used to bully me all of these guys that used to bully me and now I look at them now and they're you know, five kids and a big beer gut. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but that's not me. I'm single. I'm living in Vegas. I've got a body like Rambo. I've got the best job in the world and uh, that to you, mate. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And humble as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. What I love about what you do is when it becomes normal turning heads. And I've been very lucky in my life to interview all kinds of great people from Andrea Bocelli, who's a classical singer at the top of his game, to physical people like yourself who turns heads. Does it ever become normal or do you just ignore it after a while? Because you know when you walk through a room that people are noticing something di different to the average guy. I think you kind of... Do you get used to it, Mark? You can't, I don't know, you don't. I think I, because yeah. our guys aren't stuck up and egotistical, it doesn't become a focus. It becomes just part of what happens with the job. We don't focus on who's gonna look at me now, who's gonna look at me now. It's not about that. And I suppose you don't get, you don't ignore it, but you, you kind of get used to it. Yeah, right. And I, but I don't want it to go away because I know that when I'm in 20 years, when I don't, can't do this anymore, I'm gonna be looking back going, oh man, I remember when I used it 10 oh, years, five, five years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 next year <laughs> but it's, you know I'm going to miss it and I'm going to love it that's why I'm stretching it out for as long yeah. as I can you know I'm blessed to have the host job because I, you can't get a better job there's nothing more fun nothing I love the energy of your room and you are mainly part of that at the beginning because your job is to set up the feel of the show yeah. which is the more you give us the more you'll give back yeah. and I guess doing it in this town I know your show is on tour it's all over the world there's something about this town where people get off that plane and they say, I'm in Vegas and this is going to be fun. You don't get that in Milwaukee or Nottingham where I'm from because that's where they're, they're living. And right. there's sort of a thing in your head, I've got to behave. It's a different feeling when you go on tour because it's you're in one town for one night. So, you know, a lot more craziness can go on than what we do in Vegas because Vegas is so, it's we're here every night. It's like, it's like a nine to five job, really, especially when we're doing our triple shows. We get there at six and we get home at two. You know what I mean? So it's so kind of going out on tour is kind of fun. It's not Vegas, but we do bigger numbers on tour. Like they'll do 5,000 heads in one room. Try that. 
<laughs> and we should say this show is fun and naughty. I mean, you're not trying to get us in and go, well, we're going to give you this and we're going to give you something else. I mean, you do what you say on the tin. This for the girls is just an escapism for 90 minutes to blow their minds. It's as simple as that. Yeah, and, and they can come in and forget about everything and they're having a party with their mum or, you know, a bachelorette or a birthday party that, you know, they had a fight with their boyfriend so they want to come and grab some nice Aussie man butt. They can do that. Some biceps, whatever they want to grab, they can grab within reason. Are you ever damaged? Do you ever leave the show? And I'm not saying you end up in A&E, but I mean, is there a point where you go, I'm actually bleeding now, she scratched me? I think you'd get, yeah, scratching would probably be it. I think you'd get jewelry sometimes, rings and watches and stuff, or, or, or nails, or you might get a big slap, on, and you might have a big handprint on your back or your ass, and you go backstage and you'll ask your mate, have I got a, there's something on my back? Nothing worse than that, though. Uh, wandering that- fingers can be a little bit annoying. Lucky I wear jeans in the audience because uh, I'm not real happy with that. <laughs> and then I wonder about your conscience because, of course, my partner's coming to see you and then she comes home and ends up with me. Mm-hmm. My ego's already fragile. Mm-hmm. I'm already feeling insecure. Do you ever wonder about that, that they go home and they go, really, this is what I'm left with? Well, I think that we um, give them a better insight to fantasy so they can go home and shut their eyes and go, oh, that's right, that's right. <laughs> so we're actually, we actually are marriage counsellors because we help people with their marriage. If you're having a fight with your wife and you're not happy with her, send her thunder from down under, get her primed up a little bit, then when she comes home, it'll all be good. I'm not sure I agree with that. No, that no. sounds great in theory, yeah. but I'm not sure Oprah would agree. Well, you know what? Oprah should come to the show and see then. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, that's what's amazing about this show here as well. I mean, you have these stars coming through. Just the other week, I saw Paris Hilton there. I mean, that's got to give an extra kick. Yeah, especially when she got up on stage and did the fake orgasm competition. It went viral. So, you know what I mean? And she has like 100 million followers on whatever she's got. So it's just good for us. It's more... And I think that because she's a celebrity and she, because she's a, um, a high-profile figure, when she got... I mean, she's kind, Paris has kind of got a bad rep in the media anyway, but believe it or not, she is a really nice girl. She was so nice to us. She was so lovely. So anyone out there that's hating on her, man, you know, be nice. I love the um, audience participation element of your show. Is it ever boring, that? Because I can't imagine it's ever same twice because when you're playing with the public, you don't know how they're going to react. No, it's always... It's pretty good, isn't it, Mark? The weekends are obviously a little bit crazy and you get big groups of 10 and stuff like or more you get to see everything but then when you see something that you very rarely see um it's really really funny like i was doing the orgasm competition last week and a girl's and i've heard everything you know i've heard everything come out so i'm pretty i'm an expert on women that fake orgasms and this one (laughs) this one woman she was like me too by the way she was (laughs) she was faking the orgasm and in between it, she said, oh, don't tell my husband. And they kept faking it, and I lost it on stage. I thought it was hilarious. So, yeah, when you see things that are different, but no, nah, of course it never gets boring, ever. Again, the reaction that you get is probably the loudest in Las Vegas, is probably the most outrageous. Your audience just let themselves go and have the best ball ever. And that's what Vegas is about. And, you know, and that's what life is about, really. It's just about having a good time and having fun. It's too short to be too serious about anything. You know, we're not here to degrade anyone or you know, shove our crutch in anyone's face with a dollar bill. We're about women empowerment and having fun and enjoying themselves. And I think you're a little bit too hard on yourself. I think you're probably one of the best interviewers I've had and I've done a lot for 17 years and I think you're really, really great. So you should give yourself a bit of a pat on the back. I'll do it for you. There you go. Mate. Cheers, big man. And very finally, the rules then when I come into you, what can I do, what can't I do? You can do anything you want pretty much except for um, we don't do the dollar bill tipping thing. We believe when the girls pay their money at the front door, we give them the best show possible and that's all that counts. I mean, you know, the guys aren't slot machines, you know, popping a quarter, pull the handle and get a jackpot we don't do that okay we keep it clean we keep it fun we keep it classy hey listen great to see you daniel thank you so much for coming and uh, good luck uh, what you do is remarkable and i think more than any other guy in the show you seem to touch a nerve with the girls which is fascinating good for you if i could just be you for an hour that'd be fantastic if you could help me with that yeah i could give you a hand there you go. <laughs> and of course to you i mean what an amazing powerhouse performance you are i mean you come out there and you rock it from the beginning and that's not easy to do especially on a two or three show day good to meet you guys thank Thanks, you Alex. Great to meet you too, mate. Thank you.